Hello everyone. Welcome to Basic Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to talk about the punch through effect in a BJT. Before I start the discussion on the punch through effect, let us first consider a diode in the reverse biased condition as shown in the figure 1 here. As you can see, the anode of the diode is connected to the negative terminal of the input supply and cathode of the diode is connected to the positive terminal of the input supply. Because of this, the diode will be reverse biased. Please note, in one of my previous videos, I have explained about the working principle of a diode. That video would be a prerequisite for this video. So, I would highly recommend you to watch that video first before you continue with this one. You can watch that video by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of the same in the video description below. Coming back to the topic of this discussion, let us understand what happens to the diode when the input voltage V is increased. If I increase the input voltage V, since the diode is reverse biased, the width of the depletion region would increase. If I keep on increasing the input voltage V, then the width of the depletion region will continue to increase. This is a very important point to note because we are now going to apply this principle to understand the punch through effect in a BJT. You should note that as the input voltage is increased across a reverse biased PN junction diode, the width of the depletion region increases. Let us now apply this effect to a BJT configured in either common base, common collector or common emitter configuration. Let us consider the circuit shown in figure 2 here which is for an NPN transistor connected in common base configuration. I am currently interested in this particular P and N regions which form the base and collector regions of the BJT. As previously discussed in my previous video on BJT construction, a BJT is constructed by adding either a P or N semiconductor region to a PN junction diode. Because of the addition of the extra semiconductor region, the transistor will have two junctions within its structure. The first junction is between the emitter and base. We will call it as J, E, B. And the second junction is between collector and base. Let us denote this as J, C, B. As previously said, we are going to concentrate on the base and collector semiconductor regions, which form the PN junction as highlighted here. And the junction between base and collector is represented by J, C, B. Let us come back to the voltage VCC here. Look at this, the negative plate of the VCC is connected to the base region which is made up of P type semiconductor and the positive terminal of the VCC is connected to the collector region which is made up of N type of semiconductor. This will as previously discussed reverse bias the junction between the base and collector regions. We just learned that when we apply a negative voltage to the anode and cathode terminals of a PN junction diode, the width of the depletion region increases. So, if I now increase the value of VCC, then the depletion region width between the base and collector region starts to increase. When the depletion region between the collector and base terminal increases, you should note that the effective area of the base region decreases. If the effective area across the base region decreases, that means that the base current IB decreases. This effect which has occurred due to the application of negative voltage and due to which the width of the depletion region between base and collector regions increasing is called as early effect. If I now continue to further increase the value of the collector to base voltage, then the width of the depletion region continues to increase and the width of the base region continues to decrease. At some point, if the value of VCC is high enough, then the width of the base region will be completely engulfed by the width of the depletion region. 
Please note the red colored region what is shown between the emitter and collector is the depletion region and now the depletion region has completely engulfed the base region. In such a case the base current IB completely reduces to zero. Another very important point that must be noted here is that when the base region is completely engulfed by the depletion region between collector and base, this depletion region will contact the junction between the emitter and base which is JEB. When this happens, the base region has effectively reduced to zero and now the charge carriers can freely move from emitter to collector as well as collector to emitter. When the charge carriers between collector and emitter start moving freely within the device, this situation will break down the BJT and a large collector current starts to flow across the device which will destroy the transistor. This effect is called as punch through effect. It should be noted that punch through effect is an undesirable phenomenon that has occurred due to a large value of voltage across the collector and base which has caused the collector to base junctions depletion region to increase and touch the depletion region between emitter and base. Since punch through effect is an undesirable phenomenon and it destroys the transistor, care must be taken to make sure this does not happen. Let us now discuss about how to make sure the punch through effect does not occur in a BJT. As previously discussed, the punch through effect is because of large value of the collector to base voltage which is VCB. So, some restriction must be put on VCB so that the depletion region between base and collector does not reach the depletion region between emitter and base. So, let us now apply a restriction on the collector to base voltage to let us say VCB max. This is the maximum applicable value which will not create the punch through effect. Any value of VCB greater than the VCB maximum will cause the punch through effect and the device will break down and get destroyed. So, whenever you want to operate the BJT in a proper way without causing the punch through effect, then the applied value of voltage across collector to base should be less than the maximum collector to base voltage that will create the punch through effect. Well, with that, we have come to the end of this video. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on basic electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.